Hello, this is Debbie Dashinger, and welcome to Dare to Dream. I want to first thank the sponsor of the show, Dr. Dane here, as well as accessconsciousness.com. They do amazing work in the world. You can become a facilitator, take one of their online workshops. I think everything's online at this point, and at some point you can go in person. Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com and accessconsciousness.com. Dare to Dream podcast has been nominated for Two People's Choice podcast awards for a Webby Award and is ranked in the top 50 best podcasts in all of self-improvement on Apple Podcasts. We are right now ranking, I pay attention to this, right now we popped in St. Lucia, which I thought was rather exotic. So we're so prevalent in the United States and of course in Canada and Europe, but I love watching the countries that are lighting up and really resonating with this message. So thank you. And also for those who subscribe, who say like, who contribute somehow with a comment, I do read all of them. And I'm so grateful for you and for all you're doing out in the world and for your feedback. It's tremendous. My question to you today is, what can we learn from an energy body wizard? My guest is Don Lynch, who is a pioneer in the field of vital energy transformation. He is able to clairvoyantly see and feel the body's energies and blocks to proper flow. He's known for his simple methods by shifting the body's energies for health and vitality. Don has been involved with chiropractic and energy research for 40 years. He's been featured on telesummits, monthly online and in-person events, and conference calls where he's able to transform and shift multiple people at a time with his energy transmissions. What that means for you, dear listeners and watchers, is you want to stick around to the end because you're going to be receiving some healing and energy transmission yourself. Don is affiliated with Muay Thai Sangha and with Kshartya Sangin schools of Thailand, Mexico, Spain, Greece, and Canada. Don has devoted 12 years researching advanced energy techniques using a science and biologically based approach. For those interested in the cell phone body phenomena, he shared his energy clearing method with cell phones at the IS. SEM conference to a packed crowd of people. And you can find out more about him at his website, which is donlynch.net, spelled don l y n c h dot net. And with that, I welcome the esteemed Don Lynch to Dare to Dream. Great to have you. Thanks, Debbie. Good to be here. Awesome. Yeah. I was telling you before we started, it's like, Man, I like what you do. I'm reading your bio. I'm getting goosies, you know, excited. <laughs> uh, so I want to know so much about you. You are known as a wizard. Doesn't get much cooler than that. So I don't know if you have a staff or not, but you're known for doing energy body transformation or transformer, being a transformer. How did you acquire these gifts? Is this been an always kind of thing since you were a kid or did something occur? Well, um, I, I was always, you know, really in tune with people and even, even throughout my life in the business world, I was always really good at managing people. I was, I was exceptional at it and, uh, was recognized for it. And, um, I, I didn't realize that the profundity that I had this ability to, to sense other people and things like that and read people and things like that. Until uh, I moved to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and I started taking up free diving. Um, What's we that? Did, free diving is like scuba diving with no equipment. Oh my goodness! How how deep do you go? Well, well, I'm not the greatest, but you know the I can you know I can go down like three or four meters. You know, we were basically going after lobster and mm. yeah, and some fish, and most of the, most of it's like pretty low level stuff. It's not like the pros can go down you know, 50 feet or so, but, um, yeah, 10, 12, 15 feet, maybe, you know, for me, but, um, so, and we did it quite a bit and we, we were always out in the middle of the night for lobster. And, uh, so there was a certain amount of risk because, you know, at, 
at night in the ocean, it's like a, a little bit different scenario there because you're like lower down on the food chain. <laughs> and, and, and all you have is a flashlight. So it's like, but anyhow, so yeah, I was doing quite a bit with a, with, with a friend and uh, got in a really tense situation where we were used to, used to diving in rocks and in big waves and stuff. And uh, we were at a resort here that was, um, that had a protected swimming area that was enclosed by um, a rock wall. And then um, on one end where the water could go out once it was trapped in, inside the rock area, it'd go out. And uh, so we were free diving, it was like one in the morning there. And, and uh, the waves were pretty good size. They're, you know, 14, 15 foot waves, but we were used to it, it was like no big deal. And, and so we're going along the rocks and we had flashlights and, and, uh, and Hawaiiana spear guns. And, and so we were hopscotching along this wall. And when you're in the middle of the night and as black as you know can be out and you, all you have is a little flashlight, you get real focused on one area. And so we were, we were working this wall and we got down towards the end where the exit was to all the water. And uh, at the exit, I came around over behind the, my buddy and got swept out into this giant washing machine like effect that was right there. All the water was rushing over the wall, was trapped there, was shooting out this one exit. And uh, it was right in front of a rock wall. And I was trapped in the middle of that. My buddy was literally just 20 feet away from me and there was nothing he could do. And I was just getting pounded with these giant waves and trapped in there. And, and uh, there's nobody around to help. And it was a desperate situation and uh, it was either you know, I could, you know, hope to get washed out in the middle of the bay here and maybe be found the next morning, you know, or, uh, you know, risk it and go up against, climb, literally climb up a rock wall with, you know, 15 foot waves pounded on me. And uh, I chose the ladder and um, lost equipment and got beat up really bad, bloody mess. And uh, anyhow, so it was pretty tense and that was the first of three experiences in the water in one year. I, I was a slow learner and uh, had three bad experiences in the water and almost died each time. And finally, one afternoon, I was sitting on, on a rooftop right in the middle of downtown Puerto Vallarta, literally half a block from the beach. And um, I was just chilling out and relaxing. And suddenly my body just started going. <sighs> started acting like that. And my wife says, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, I don't know what's going on. It just kept going over and over. And then it finally stopped. And like shortly thereafter, I'm in the coffee shop one day with all, all my friends and um, somebody was complaining of an ache or pain or something like that. And I could feel it in their body. And I just, I just energetically grabbed it and just pulled it out of their body. And at first everybody's like, oh yeah, right. You know, blah, blah, blah. And like, well, that was, uh, that was the beginning of a long journey that's led me to this point today. And it, uh, it has allowed me to become more sensitive, sensitive on a very profound level and uh, work on people internationally via Zoom and uh, give free classes online, work with large groups of people. And I have classes here in Puerto Vallarta. If anybody's watching this and they're in or around Puerto Vallarta, we have classes twice a week here on Wednesday night and Sunday morning. And uh, work with uh, clairvoyants, psychics, channelers, all kinds of people, and just normal people as well. And uh, to um, after watching how to do an interview. <laughs> <laughs> He's referring to my class. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I, I want to, I, sometimes uh, in my interviews, I, I just say, well, basically, I don't know what the hell I'm doing and I'm just going with the flow. But, I, but you challenged me and to clarify more. And I've, I've been trying to do this more with the people I'm working with is that, um, what I try to do is people come at me from all different walks of life and different abilities and stuff. What, what I'm trying to do is to get people um, to readily access a higher self 
mm. and to to learn to stay out there and stay here at the same time work mm. in both places at the same time so that no matter what you're doing no matter what path you're walking that when you're working from outside of yourself from out there from a higher level it affects how effective you are in this basic level where we're at here in this physical plane so you it it adds immensity, enormity, and power behind whatever you're doing. Insights like you won't believe, connection with others and with uh, with everything outside of you. So that's that's what I'm doing today. It's fascinating. I love and I love how humble you are. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So I know that you're known for having this inner guidance system that's activated to be a vital energy body transformer. I'm curious about the quantum science that's around your activations. Ooh, how did that work? That. Um, I don't know. Anybody that's seen my interviews, they they know that I, I am a science based guy. I mm. I am science based, and I can prove things to people, no matter how skeptical they are. I can prove the existence of a lot of the stuff that people think is like hypothetical and stuff like that, and. Uh, this quantum stuff is fascinating. And so, um, and, and I, I don't know, you know, what you know about me, but I, I don't have any books about any of this. Okay. But I spent three, three and a half, four years traveling around trying to figure out what I was doing scientifically, hmm. trying to find somebody. And I demonstrated the stuff I was doing, like just the really basic stuff, like the cell phone stuff. There's a cell phone phenomena about the cell phone in your body electronic stuff in your body that you can actually change the way your body interacts with your electronic devices instantly and it stays that way so i was i was showing scientists this and they're like i don't know you know i can prove to you it works i can demo i can have it i can do it right on you and you can feel it literally shift in your body yet nobody could explain what i was doing so i was at i was dumbfounded and i so i went to all these scientific conferences and all this stuff and and uh, um, I, I ran into a guy, Dr. Claude Swanson, and uh, probably the most famous biophysicist in, in the Western hemisphere. And uh, he had heard of me and he chased me down. He grabbed a hold of me and says, are you Don? Are you Don? I'm like, I don't know. Does he owe you money? <laughs> <laughs> then I'm not him. <laughs> Anyhow, so... Uh, he invited me to do a demo for him in his, and I, I showed him for an hour. I kept him fascinated. He says, at the end of it, he says, I don't know what you're doing, but um, whatever you're doing, I think has something to do with toroidal fields. And uh, so he- Say that word again, toroidal fields? You know, you know you've heard of Taurus uh -huh. tor and toroidal. Oh, toroidal. Okay, okay. Uh, Taurus fields are fields that go like this, okay? Whereas toroidal are fields that go like this. Mm. Okay. And then you can do like compressed or phi 10 structured toroidal field, which is, uh, you know, that's one of the things that they're looking at for like wormhole travel and that kind of thing. And uh, that, that's fascinating stuff. So um, I don't know if you want, if you want to, I can maybe show you something like right off the bat, if you'd be interested on something in the quantum field. Uh, hell yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That would be awesome. Okay. okay. So, you know, the human brain is really interesting. Okay. We're only using a part, a very small portion of it. And so um, there's one aspect to it that, that uh, one basic as aspect that we just ignore. And it's just unbelievable that we ignore it. And that's, the animal, animal brain up there actually running the whole show, okay? And part of the animal brain is the, is the uh, uh, amygdala. And the amygdala, one of the responsibilities is to protect the host body for the animal brain. And that's the fight or flight thing going on. So this is the most basic aspect. And if you're all stressed out, you go home, you sit down in your favorite chair or whatever, and you're in a safe, protected place, and then the animal brain goes, hey, there's some stress over here in that shoulder or in that neck. And that is injuring the, my host body. And so it makes that 
amygdala go to that point of stress in your shoulder or neck or wherever it is, go to that particular point and makes it take, makes the body take a deep breath and blow it out. And what that does, it does is actually take that point of stress and releases it through that cleansing breath. I mean, that's a built-in system and we use it all the time automatically. We don't even, didn't even think about it. Okay. So we have the capacity to actually heal our body already existing in our brains. And what I do for a beginner is to go in there and show them how to, how to use that in a controlled manner. Now, for instance, um, if uh, everybody that's watching or listening to this, if you just take, your, take one of your hands and put it over your physical heart and make a, a circuit there, okay? So essentially we're just bags of water and we have some electricity bounced around in there and we have an animal brain up there running the show. When you take your take that one arm and, and put your hand over your heart, what you're looking for is a point of tension and feel your body change right there. You find a point where there's a great, there's more tension than any place else. And you find that point and the brain will pinpoint that point there, okay? You can even put a number on it, like one to 10 or whatever you wanna do, okay? And then all you have to do is just Go to a neuron down to one tiny little neuron and feel that point right there. All right. Pinpoint it. And then just take a deep breath. And blow it all the way out, all the way out, all the way out, all the way. Now, the important part here is to actually feel that shift. So what we've done there is we we've located a trigger point or a point of actual resistance, electrical resistance in the bag of water that was located on the heart, okay? And now the animal brain has gone to that point and released that energetic point out of the body off the heart. So now if I was a psychologist or a psychiatrist, I could say, oh, that was your grandma Mabel and she yelled at you when you're seven years old and told you that you weren't good enough, okay? But the reality of it is that memory or whatever it was, that emotion or whatever it was, is just a point of electrical resistance in the bag of water. So when I'm working with people, I don't care what the story is, but I can feel points of resistance in people's, in people's bodies. And I have them actually put their hand on a point of resistance in their body and release it. And we go through and it's real and it's instant as you may have felt with your heart. So if I understand you correctly, then for what is happening in my body currently, if I were to take my hand and put it on that area and allow my awareness to go there, then I can pinpoint the pain area, if you will, and then take it down to the level of neuron and with that neuron, take a breath and whew, release that out with the idea that there's consciousness, I guess, attached that releases. Is that accurate? The, sent, the essential part of this is to think less and feel more. The more profoundly you can feel, the more accurate, more activated your brain will be to heal the body. Okay. All right, so that's like the baby step of quantum energy, mm -hmm. all right? Now, another aspect of the brain that we're not using is our ability to detect torsion, okay? Torsion is spin, okay? Like on your body right now, around your head, your torsion is from your right shoulder around the back of your head and across the front over your left shoulder, mm -hmm. okay? So just go calm and centered, just relax and keep your eyes open. It's more fun that way because we're training the brain to feel on a profound level with your eyes open, all right? So now feel this. I'm gonna push it a little bit harder for you around your head that way, the same way it wants to go like this. And feel that little tension right there instantly. Mm -hmm. Then you release that. And I push it harder like this. 
and it builds again. Release that. Wait, let me do a big breath. That was big. Okay, so now I'm just making you aware of that spin. Okay. And now I'm going to stop it and feel the shift. Feel this. Mm. All right. Mm -hmm. It's like a reintegration. Yeah, it just slows down. Okay, now here comes the fun part. Now I'm going to push it the other way around your head. All right. So I'm going to push it over here and feel this. I'm like a human maypole right now. Yeah, you are. You know, I actually, somebody, one of my guys came up with this idea. He says, okay, remember the old record players with the spindle up like this? And you put a record on it and it goes this way, around one way. And if you put another record on it, just imagine it would go the other way. And so this is toroidal. Mm. You have an axis going right through the middle of it, okay? Now here, I'm gonna run a separate energy, a torsion around your head, over your left shoulder, back around over your right, okay? And it feels like this. Feel a little tension right there immediately. Release that. And then feel the shift. Okay, now I'm gonna push it harder like this. And another point right there, feel that one. Then a little bit harder like this, then harder and faster. Now that's just a baby step. Now I'm gonna stop that one and feel the shift again. Yeah, there's more space. It's okay. Like a lot more space. All right. Okay. Now get ready for this one. Here it comes, Debbie. Feel this one. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do both at once. And this is toroidal. Wow. Cool. And this is one of the reasons I do videos. Okay. And even on this energetically speaking here with the radio, they will get this. This, this energy is being embedded in this, mm. whatever media you're using is being embedded right now. And Claude Swanson gave me the mission that I have to put this out there for people because this will be there forever, what we're doing right now. All right. And now feel this, Debbie. Here it comes. Release that. Yeah. Feel it. Release it. I'm going to push it harder and faster and feel this. And release that. Amazing. The second one, for some reason, seems to always be so much easier. It's like speed Less bumps, resistance. taking the speed bumps out. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to make it go harder and faster and feel this. Okay. Now I'm going to lift it over your head and here it goes. I'm going to put it above your head and feel this. All right. Now I'm going to bring it back down over your head like this and over your shoulders and feel that tightness right there. Mm. Okay. Release mm. it. Heavy too. Yeah. Release it. Now I'm going to push it down. Like there, right there. Feel that in your abdomen right there. Release that. And then down over your hips and feel that right hip. Feel that. Release that. That's my good hip too. <laughs> it gets more pressure on it. I'm pushing it down. Down over your legs. And down deeper. I'm going to push a little bit harder and faster down there like this. <sighs> then I'm going to bring it up and feel this. I'm going to put it back over, right over your abdomen like this. I'm going to push it out like this and feel this. <sighs> Release that. That was nice. That felt like a breeze. Okay. Now on the outside of that, I'm going to run a cord of energy 
going to go on the outside in a spiral from top to bottom and then from bottom to top going mm -hmm. equal but opposite and feel this. Oh. If you could see this visually, it would look like the flower of life. Ah, oh, how gorgeous. Absolutely. Is it sort of like an atom or like a, a spinning lotus or? Just feel this. Mm. And you can describe it later. Feel it. There. Like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. feel, feel that resistance right there. Release that. Okay, now I'm going to speed that up and feel this. And now right through the middle of it, I'm going to run a sine wave and feel this. And I'm going to change the amplitude and frequency of the sine wave like this, like this. And release that. Wow. I feel like a freaking radio station, like a satellite dish. Now I'm going to put torsion into the sine wave and feel this. And then at activates like DNA. Feel that. And then we put torsion into that and feel this. And then we take that vertical thing, we turn it sideways, mm -hmm. and we put it right at your, right your uh, thyroid, right here in your throat. Mm. Feel this. Then I grab the ends of it like it's a sock and I pull the ends together towards the middle like this. And feel this. Feel that right there. That's zero point right there. Feel that. Release that. And then now I pull it through. And then that feels like that. Now remember that. Feel that out there. Just kind of be out there and feel that. Feel that. And then stay here. Stay out there and stay here and feel that. Release that resistance. Your ego is saying, you can't do this. You can't do this, but you are doing it. Stay out there and feel this and stay here. And remember that, what that feels like. And then I'm gonna pull it back together, back through zero point, right there, zero point again, and release that. And then back to original position like this. Wow. That is some powerful stuff. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm just like being with that. And I, I know I got to be a host too at the same time, but that was, <laughs> that was pretty spectacular. That's amazing. So when you work with people, is this a starting point for you? So they have an experience and then you go from there, depending on what it is you see and feel within their body. Honest to, honest to goodness. I don't have any plan. I meet somebody and I say, Hey, how you doing? What's going on? Um, where are you at? And we talk about their dogs or cats, you know, and just establish a connection. Mm -hmm. And then I trust my connection outside of myself a hundred percent. And they give me what that person needs in that instant. And that's what we do. Okay. So sort of prevalent question for the world at large right now. This is not everybody, but there's a lot of people who are living with a lot of fear, uncertainty, and anxiety. Is it possible uh, to release the fear, the anxiety systemically, the patterns that are running us? And I also want to say that for many people, because a lot of this is my perception too, but there are many people too who grew up, um, you know, in a household or had traumatic experiences. And systemically, this is a thing that runs like this record you're talking about. And even though they may prefer something different, they may go to workshops or something different, they may have the best intentions, but still it's this drumbeat in the back. So how can that be altered and released, shifted? Well, Okay, first of all, people have to realize the role of ego in their lives, how it affects how they think, speak, and feel. And once you get ego aware, you can control your ego. 
and set that aside, okay? And then what we can do is disconnect that timeline that they've created about who they were, who they are today, and where they're going tomorrow. We can destroy that timeline. And then so you can walk your true path that you're designed to walk. And there's so many people that are so sensitive that in the state of anxiety and fear that everybody's living in, that's just, it's just crushing them. And I have some simple solutions for that stuff. And I, you know, I hope, hope people, you know, when they, when they hear this or see this, that they can do this next thing. Okay. And the next thing is, is to be able to face your fear and feel it in your body. Now, if they would take, most fear is usually stored like in their abdomen and intestinal, you know? And so if they take one of their hands and just put it on their intestines, you know, and just slowly move it around your abdomen, you know, and just kind of feel your body and you're going to find your body react at a certain point. It's going to go, whoop, it's going to create a little tension right there. Now just keep your hand on that point and put your mind right in that point and feel that point of tension, that anxiety, that fear right there. Pinpoint exactly where you feel it at. And then just take a deep breath and blow it out. Hmm. And then feel the shift. The important thing is to feel the shift and recognize that it, it's shifting or it's not shifting. You know, if it's not shifting, then you're probably not doing it right. You've disconnected between the brain and the body and that happens a lot nowadays because they're they don't want to feel people don't want to feel they've blocked their ability to feel and so consequently you know they end up doing harm to not only other people but to themselves you know and this is totally avoidable and uh you know i, I think i have some solutions for that and um i appreciate an opportunity to be on with somebody like you get some exposure. So, um, oh my God, I, I love this. That's a title for, uh, I'm writing all this down, but this is a great title. If you do a workshop solutions for sensitives. Yeah. You know, I love working with sensitives because they're, they are natural conduits. Totally. When they're putting up blocks and, and all this stuff in their lives, they're, they're not following their true paths. They're, they're actually resisting their flow. And that is not good. That costs you so much energy. To resist flow. If you can actually feel the flow, feel the resistance in you of somebody or something or energy of some kind, you can feel it in you, then you can release it. Can you give an example? So I'm a sensitive. I'm sure most of the people who will be watching and listening to this can absolutely claim me too. I'm a sensitive. When you say be in a flow, what do you mean? Or can you give an example of what this looks like for someone who might not be and maybe in a resistance and what you would recommend so they can make that shift? Well, the thing is, is that um, they have to establish a firm connection to their higher self to be one with everything and everyone. Okay. Mm. When you establish that connection, um, you can, you can trust that intuition or whatever you want to call it, trust that connection mm. and don't trust the ego. You take the ego, you put it over there on the side, open up your connection, feel it. Does it feel right or not? If it doesn't feel right, feel it in your body where you feel that not right at, that resistance to it and release that. And then establish a connection again, okay? And now you'll feel the flow. Mm. All right. It's awesome. As you're saying this, I'm looking out the window and there's all these uh, San Pedro plants. I don't know if that's indigenous to the area you are at in Mexico, but here it is in Southern California. Um, a lot of desert areas have San Pedro cactus. They're quite magnificent. And um, that's really easy for me to connect with and then to go out from there. Okay. Well, just right there, there's a part of you saying that you can't do that. That's your ego pulling, pulling, pulling you back in, okay? Your ego doesn't want you to go out there. The ego is self-limiting beliefs about who and what you can do. It's just like when I had you out there, 
at that higher level, mm -hmm. you felt the resistance. You felt that ego trying to pull you back in because it was uncomfortable out there. And we're proving that you are a higher being. Okay. I actually feel like it is the most comfortable I ever am is when I'm there. However, I'm pretty pr transparent. Uh, I, it, it is, it truly is the most blissful, the most connected, the most yeah. right I ever feel. And I am very fortunate to be able to feel that. Um, and I will also say though, it's not my default. So it's almost like to have to continually be reminded, right? Yeah, that. Make that the default. Like for instance, Debbie, okay? Establish your connection right now, okay? Go out there the best you can. Make the best connection you got, mm -hmm. All right? Okay, so now there's a little bit of, uh, up above you and off to the right, just a little bit right. up above you right there. There's a block right there. There's a drag in your connection. I feel it. I feel yeah. it. Yeah. So why don't you just take it out? Mm. Feel it. Let it run through you. Mm. And then feel the shift and check your connection. Okay. Now there's another one up above you and just in front of you, just a little bit. There's one up there. Feel that one, it's higher up right there and feel that and take it out. And feel the shift. Mm -hmm. Then over there, off to the left, maybe it's up towards the front, just a little bit, like right in there, there's one right there. So you feel that, then take that one out. Okay, now there's another one on the left back up there, feel that one up there, right there. You got it, pinpoint it. Now take it out. And now check your connection. Mm, it's very peaceful, this is great. And what about heart healings, may I ask? Um, how do we heal the heart or what's going on with the heart that needs a healing? Well, there's different levels, okay? The thing that needs healing is, uh, is just don't put names on stuff because you are just a bag of water. I'm just a bag of water. We just have some energy bouncing around in there, okay? And when you put names on stuff, that's all ego-based stuff. And the ego is self-limiting, okay? So just feel that, whatever it is, in or on your heart. Like, right, I'm going to poke one on you. I'm going to poke it for you. Just feel okay. this. Okay. Just like right there. I'm going to poke it. Feel this. Right there. All right? All right? So why don't we just take it out? You got to keep your eyes open. You can feel that. Right. You know, <laughs> feel that. Right there. I'm going to poke it again. Right there. Take that out. I'll help you. Now you'll still have that memory, but we're taking away the effect that it had on your energetic body and on your physical body. You'll still have the memory. Interesting. We're re releasing the effect that it has on you. Now there's another one over here on this side. I'm going to poke that one for you. Feel this one right there. Right there. All right. There. You got it? Now take it out. Take it out. Cool. That was heavy. Okay, now once once we get, like, just remember to go to that same point, go back to that same point we were just at. Go right there, all yeah. right? So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take, uh, like, a, a toroidal field i'm going to shape it into like a little tornado and i'm going to put it right on that point and now feel this okay this is the equal but opposite spin in a pinpoint location right on your on that side of your heart right there okay right there and i'm going to put it right there and i'll feel this and feel that feel that open up mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna come at it from a different angle and feel this over here like this. Now feel that resistance right there, release that. Weird. 
weird. This is so wild. Oh. Now I'm going to come at it from this way and feel this one. And feel that. <laughs> Release that one. And feel that. Are we having fun yet? Yeah. You know, as you do this, I, I'm looking out here, but somehow it's almost like an x-ray. I feel like I can see these spots, these dark spots. And those are what are, I also feel, by the way, the tightness, the uh, constriction, if you will, in those places. But it's very interesting to get, um, I've never had a visual like that before. When you activate the brain in, in all different kinds of ways, you can see and feel things you've never felt before, even though they've always been there. We've only, we've only limited our capacity to feel this. And so my thing is to get it, just kind of pry it open like that, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. So that, does that mean that when people work with you, that their skills as well get, um, they're multiplied, they become easier, their natural skills, but they were just you know, hidden beneath all of this crap. And then as it's released, so is all the resistance or the, you know, not living in the gift. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, it's funny because before you were saying, um, do not trust the ego, but Don, for some reason, the first time I heard, don't trust the eagle. So, you know, it took me a minute for my brain to get caught up. No, he is saying ego. And then my uh, mind went to the fact, uh, reading about you, that <clears throat> you had a shamanic experience at one point in your life. I'm really interested in shamanism. Um, I love everything about it. I've traveled the world, had some experiences myself. So you were with an Indian in Mexico. I'd love you to talk about that, whatever you're willing to share, and maybe who the shaman was, how you were mentored, or what happened. Okay, I'll tell you the story, okay? But it's, it's, uh, it took place, oh, probably seven or eight years ago. And I was giving classes on energy stuff in Guadalajara, Mexico. Uh, a friend of mine uh, always invited me over, and uh, um, I worked on a lot of people. And so, um, at this one class, I had I, like I had just I'd gone there by bus, and I got there like at four, and the class started at six. And I'm like, holy mackerel, you know? And I started working. I had twenty some people in the class, and and uh, I was about halfway through. It was like two and a half hours into it, and I was just like. I noticed there's this lady over here standing off to the side with a, a guy over there. And I didn't pay much attention to him. And, uh, but they were intent on what I was doing. And so I, I worked on all these people, blah, blah, blah. I got done. And my buddy's name was Frank Francisco Ayon. And uh, he's a, he was a, he's a professional fighter, Muay Thai and mixed martial arts and stuff. And uh, I was in his gym. And so he, he, uh, he came over to me. I was exhausted. I mean, I was totally gassed out. And um, I was, I told, he said, Don, hey, can you do one more for me? I'm like, oh, Frank, I'm like totally gassed, man. I don't think I can handle it. He says, come on, please, just one more. I'm like, oh, okay. And so the lady, he brought the lady over. And it turns out she's a shaman. Uh, uh, lived in the mountains outside of uh, Guadalajara there. And uh, she had this mysterious pain that nobody could fix. And like, well, I don't know if I can do it or not, but you know, I don't know. So I just, I put my hands on her, uh, one, one on her head and one on the back of her head. And I just connected with her on a profound level. And this voice comes to me just as clear as I'm talking to you. And it says, hey, take her cell phone Make sure it's turned on, okay? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I'm all, I always go with the flow. I mean, it's you know, if, if I get that, that's what I'm gonna do. And so we get her cell phone out, make sure it's on, and then uh, I and I connected to her again. They said, okay, now take the cell phone 
and put it where the pain is. Or no, 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 no. First they told me, they said, take the cell phone and put it up to her head like she's going to use it. I'm like, okay. And so I did that. I put it up by her head there. And then they said, just tap her a few times. I'm like, I did that. And so take a deep breath. Blow it out. I'm like, okay. And then put it on her thyroid. So I did that. Same thing again. Take a deep breath, blow it out. I'm like, okay, now what? And they said, well, take her cell phone now and put it on the pain where the pain is. I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, put the cell phone where the pain is. I'm like, okay. And I mean, she's going with the flow with me. I mean, she's right there with me. And so I put the phone on her pain there and tapped on her body a few times, like three or four times. And we all took a deep breath and blew it all the way out. And her pain was gone. Now, I'm like, well, well, that's weird. And we were look, everybody's looking at each other like, what, what just happened right there? We, we didn't know what happened. And uh, so, um, and, and you know, weird things happen. You know, like when you're totally exhausted and all your defenses are down, that's when stuff can really come at you, right? And so like, well, maybe this is a real thing. I don't know. But anyhow, so my wife is a marathon runner and she's always got aches and pains and stuff. And I, I got on the bus, I went back to Puerto Vallarta, I get home. I said, hey, honey, this weird thing happened with somebody, this uh, shaman in Guadalajara and uh, with her cell phone. And, and so, um, of course, I used my wife as a guinea pig and we did it to her and the same thing happened. The pain was gone. I'm like, holy mackerel, what's going on here? And then uh, it just so happened, <laughs> like the next week we went on vacation we were driving across the Midwestern U.S. And the uh, first place was like my lawyer's uh, office. And the secretary comes in and she's sick and she's got, got this thing going on. And I said, hey, you got a cell phone with you? <laughs> <laughs> and, and the whole trip was about taking pain out of people's bodies using their cell phones. And it was just, uh, and that was the beginning of a very strange journey. So that was, that was one of my shamanic experiences. And now I have friends that are shamans that just love me. And uh, um, yeah, I, yeah, I have a lot of fun with shamans. They love me. And have they done any work on you or for you or taken you on any, any journeys, so to speak? Um, no, usually it's the other way around, <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah, because healers need healers, of course. That's right, that's right important yeah, uh, yeah we yeah that's sorry true. go ahead well you know i have um and usually it's not you know funny thing i'm thinking of one particular shaman that is actually here not too far from me and uh, the first time i met her you know i'm a gringo i'm a i'm male i'm a gringo from the u.s you know and she's like and uh everybody has their all preconceived notions and stuff and we were on a healing uh, journey in the mountains here. We're donating our services to, to rancheros and people living in the mountains here that don't usually get any kind of energetic or any kind of um, beyond the absolute minimum medical stuff. And, and so we were traveling together and she was there as the spiritual person and stuff. And then she saw what I was doing and she was like, she got real friendly with me and started, and we're sitting together and she had reached a point in her life that she had reached that that glass ceiling for shamans and, and she couldn't break through it. And I, and I always go to the flow and this, this wisdom came through me and came out just for her. And she, and that's probably been five, six years ago. And every time she sees me, I mean, she just loves me up and gives me deep appreciation because it significantly changed the way she did everything. And I, I love shamans. I love people that are open, no matter what they're doing or what, where they're at, um, if they're using their high abilities, I mean, I, I love working with those kind of people. Mm. So what do you attribute those healings to using the cell phone? Was there some kind of frequency being emitted that connected with the body? Well, you know, like I said before, I, you know, I was, I traveled, I mean, I spent so much time and money traveling, going to these scientific conferences and show these scientists this stuff. <laughs> yeah, there was one scientist that a research scientist that was given, they were, he was given speeches all over the world about EMFs and how these, uh, how it all affects your body and stuff like that. 
And I spent, I, I traveled hours and days to go see this guy. And um, there was a, there, there were several scientists there. There was one famous one, Yuri from Russia. He's a, he's a Russian guy that was familiar with toroidal fields. And he was, he's like way out there on the energy stuff. And I went to one of his presentations. I'm like, holy mackerel, this guy's really interesting. But the other guy, um, he, give, he gave his presentation. I won't tell you his name, but I went to his presentation. And it was the same stuff. He's always talking about it. I've seen his YouTube presentations and stuff like that. And then after his presentation, everybody was like mobbed around him and stuff like that. And uh, um, I waited till he went to the bathroom and came back. And I caught him in the hallway. I said, hey, I have something with cell phones you might be interested in. It would just take me like 30 seconds to show you. And he's like, oh, I don't want to see it. I, I'm like, no, it's just no big deal. It'll just take a, a few seconds. No big deal. He says, do you have any, any scientific research on it? I'm like, no, I don't. He says, well, you got to go to go to university and get somebody to fund you to do a scientific research on it. Then I'll look at it. And I'm like, okay. All right. So anyhow, Yuri, the other guy, the, the Russian scientist who does all this way out there stuff, um, after his presentation, or no, after another one, I saw him walk around the hall or something. I saw him go to the bathroom again. I waited for him to come out. I said, hey, Yuri, I'm, I'm Don Lynch from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and I have something strange about the cell phone and, and energy and stuff, if you'd be interested. And he says, no, no, I got people waiting for me. I got to get back in there. I said, you know, here, just take me 30 seconds. Let me, we just step out here. There's a garden right there. Just step right there. And I said, here, it just take a few seconds. He says, oh, I got all these people waiting. And I said, well, okay, it's, it's just about moving energy around the body and stuff. And he's like, ah, okay, we reconsidered. We walked outside and uh, I, took some, I took a couple things out of his body for him. And it turns out he had, had an illness and uh, I took stuff out of him and just freaked him out. He was like, whoa. <laughs> and, he, and I said, well, I, I worked on it for like a half hour. He wouldn't let me go. And he, wow. still, he still he still remembers me and hunts me down these scientific conferences and his right hand man knows me now and I've done all kinds of weird stuff with him but yeah I love work, working with open minded scientists and uh, to show them like some different perspectives on stuff mm. but anyway that's me and you know you've mentioned your wife is a marathoner you've mentioned that you work with fighters I know you work with MMA and Muay Thai and other fighters worldwide. How are fight, I mean, you look like a beast. You look like yourself, like you're, rah, you work out. Um, no best with Don, not with energy and not with his body. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be a good bodyguard. But what, I assume you do this yourself, question mark, and why are the fighters of such interest to you? Well, number one, you have to remember, I'm kind of lazy to begin with, okay? <laughs> and, you know, people that are in mixed martial arts, you don't have to explain anything about mind to body to them. They've got a lock on it. I don't have to spend a half hour, 45 minutes trying to prove somebody that there's a connection between your mind and your body. I just go in there and they're like, oh yeah, okay. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And it's all over and done with. It's, they're so easy to work on. Yeah, that, that was the main reason I did fighters. Plus I was, I, I really liked uh, like kickboxing and that kind of stuff. I, 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 I enjoy, I used to enjoy hitting things in the gym and stuff like that, but um, I don't do that anymore. Um, but that was that, that was the main reason I went into working on mixed martial arts people. And plus I had, I have an extensive background in chiropractic research and I've done some really weird out there stuff on, on that and uh, um, and occasionally I get a chiropractor I run across and I can show them some different ways to diagnose and treat uh, some unusual stuff. So, and I follow I follow weird chiropractors all around the world. I, I find that stuff really interesting and uh, treating something somebody chiropractically and energetically yep. can be really, really dynamic. Thank you. This is exactly what I do right now, by the way. I've had really? a, yeah, I've had a hip, uh, un, like un, un inexplicable what's been going on with my hip for four years. And, uh, you know, how much money I threw at it, all the different if chiropractors and osteopaths, knee, right? Your knee, if your left knee and your left ankle, maybe even your heel. 
Do you, when you go to a chiropractor, does he work on your lower extremities? Well, now I finally found somebody who is very gifted. It took me a long time, but now the last, uh, whatever, six weeks, I finally found someone magnificent who does energy and chiropractic. So he, he's like a mad scientist. He's talking to my body. He's almost like he's talking to himself, but he's in this whole conversation and, oh, it's really, oh, it's there. Oh, it's spiritual. Oh, it's, oh, yeah. I just sit back and watch the madness. That's it's awesome. Kind, that's my kind of guy. That's excellent. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it sounds like you're saying he should take a look at my left ankle and left foot. I assume he's already done a lot of SOAS work, but yeah, it's going to be in, it's in, on the inside of your left knee. Does it, does your, um, do, does either your left or right knee bother you going up or down stairs? Yeah, my right knee. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. Is it going up stairs or downstairs? Which is worse? Up. Going up. Okay. Yep. Easy fix. Easy fix. Oh, you could good. probably fix it yourself right there. Sorry? Okay. You could probably fix it yourself. All right. So... I don't know if you want to do this on here or not. <laughs> I could fix it myself. Are you going to have me like snap something or what? <laughs> no, there's uh, you know, uh, go, if you, uh, if you go on YouTube and look at John Bergman, I mean, he's a, he's a professor of chiropractic that he, he's great. And uh, talk and look at one of his lower extremity uh, videos, you know, and look at how he treats the knee you know, what he does with the knee and stuff. Um, but basically your tibias, it needs to move forward just a millimeter on your left, on your, on your right knee. And it's going to, it's going to help uh, take some of the load off your left hip. Awesome. This is but beautiful. There's some, there's definitely something going on your, there's a lot of right leg stuff. Yep. You got, you got stuff going on in both legs. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's been something. And I'm, oh, I felt so limited. I love being active. So it's been, um, I'm on it though. I'm not, you know, I don't want to just roll over. So um, I'm aware, I'm aware of energy. Thank you for that. I took notes and I will sure. let him know that if, yeah, he, if he, if he wants me there when he's doing your adjustment, that'd be fun. <laughs> like get you on camera. Yeah. Why yeah. not? Put me there, put me on Zoom and uh, give me a shot what's going on and uh, let's see if we can pick up anything. Oh my God. And you guys should meet anyway. You'd probably be great buddies. Okay, this is this is great. My, my healing world is getting bigger as we speak and I receive. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Dr. Benton, we got Don Lynch on his way. <laughs> and so Don, do you have other beings that you're connected with or that you're aware of that you're connected with how do other beings manifest for you and how do they work for or with you great questions <laughs> great questions debbie wow well you know i have all kinds of really strange experiences and i have i have i have guides that give me gifts i help somebody you know i connect readily with everybody you know i have no preconcept preconceptions of anything. I keep myself open. I try not to judge. And uh, so I help people and people, especially like high, high frequency people that have stuff like, like you and a lot of other people I've run into, I help them and their guides give me gifts. And like some of the most profound stuff, I mean, it's like in my path, they give me like a piece of the puzzle and things like that. Um, is it sort of like the three wise men, like <laughs> you're showing up for your client who's the Jesus and, and all the wise men are coming with the, the frankincense and the myrrh. <laughs> oh, oh, I've got stories. I've got stories. Like, it's like really interesting. Um, I'm not sure which ones I can tell you, but there's like, uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a good generic one. Okay. If you want one. I want one that I, yeah, I, I, yeah I'm in, like really fascinated to know when you say gifts, I mean, that could be a lot of things that could mean they give you a healing that can mean they give you an insight that means they can give you a free trip that, so I'm okay. curious what All that right. looks well, like. Actually, I'll, I'll give you the story first, 
then I'll give you a little demo on the gift that the guides gave me for helping this lady, okay? All right. Well, just a second. It's under review. No, I can't give you that one, but I'll give you another one. Okay, so um, I was at one of these, at the conference that you mentioned in my bio, the, the ESM conference, okay, I-S-S-S-E-M. And uh, there was, uh, that's where Claude Swanson first ran into me, the Dr. Claude Swanson. Yeah. Um, I, had, I had shown Claude the night, the night before his big presentation, all, all the, the stuff that I was doing, you know, and then as I walk out, of his room, he says, "You're it's something to do with toroidal fields." I'm like, "Well, I knew a little bit about toroidal fields because of what my research had been doing on them." And he was presentation the next day was on that. He was the main presentation, and so I'm sitting at Claude's presentation the next morning, and um, um, you know, just sitting there looking at the slides, and yeah, okay, that yeah, I know that, okay, yeah. And then he put up this slide of a phyton structured toroidal knot, okay. This is like if you take um, if you take like a uh, a steel wheel on the end of an axis and you spin it really fast and it's spinning one way, then it makes you it's like a gyroscope and it takes you around like that. But if you put one on the opposite end and spin it the other way, it stabilizes it. But when you do that, it creates another axis through the middle of it, and then you put, do the same thing above it and the same thing below it. Then you turn these things in opposites, okay? And that's that's the essence of a toroidal field. Now. If you, if you build a big one of that and then compress it, that becomes a phyton structured knot. And it has energy running around the outside of it, running around it. And he, he put this picture up. I had never seen this picture before in my life. And he put this picture up. I'm in the audience. There's all these doctors and, and researchers and everybody around me. And I sat there and I went into deep tears. I, my tears just started running out of my eyes and down my cheeks. And I went into a deep, deep trance like I had never experienced before in my life. And I instantly could see an activated phyton structured knot over here on my side. And as I look at it, a voice came to me and said, you can make that go faster. I'm like, and I was still crying and I came, he finally, Claude stopped talking and I came out and I was, I was still breaking down and uh, Claude was still at the podium with another friend of mine, Jack Stuckey was up there. I went up and Jack is a researcher in the field of fractals and he sees fractal beings. Mm. So wow. I go up and Jack's up there and I go, hey, Jack, What's wrong? What do you see? And he turns and looks at me and he goes, there's a fractal being standing right next to you and he's laughing at you. I'm like, great, you know? <laughs> and I turn around, we had to go to lunch next. I was supposed to be sitting with all these people and talk, you know, straight face. And I was still crying. And I walked out of the auditorium and across the road to a little wooded area over there that I knew there was a little vortex there. I walked in there and just tried to calm myself down before I went to lunch. And as I'm standing there alone in this little wooded area, right in front of me, bam, appears this older guy with white hair laughing at me. And I'm like, what? And then suddenly he just went boop and went out like this. And now whenever I need him, he comes and helps me. Mm. I just how, think. I'm how does he to... help you? Is it, does he create levity or what does he do? Yeah. I hope he does more than laugh. <laughs> well, you know, uh, he, he facilitates connection, I, I would say, and amplifies my, like, my connection, my ability to connect at different levels, I think. Mm. Um, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to put anybody in a box. I don't want to put him in a box. Um, I just call him Carl. I don't know what his name is, but he just hangs around me whenever I want him. He, he's there instantly, but I have a lot of other, other guides that are out there that come and help me and then all kinds of visitors and all this kind of stuff. When I'm working at high level, like that thing I just did with you, 
um, that quantum energy stuff, you get out there and, and you have, you get visitors for sure. Mm. For sure. You get visitors. You know, I have uh, super sensitive clairvoyance people that I work with and wow. Some of the people we get, but yeah. Okay. Okay. That's so, the end of my story. <laughs> I hope it's okay. Cause we are going over, we've gone over. Is it okay if we go a little bit longer? Yeah, that's fine. With me. I'm so not done with you. <laughs> this is really, I mean, I could do this for hours. I could keep talking to you. This is so interesting to me. So let me just pause before I launch into another question, because how, how do we work with you? How do people work with you? Um, I want you to go down that road a little bit, but let's start. You've got these free vital clearing energy videos. You've got something you can gift to listeners, to watchers who are pretty darn fascinated with you right now. Where do they go to do that? First of all, Debbie, I want to thank you because my marketing lady would kill me if I didn't bring that up. <laughs> it is my pleasure. <laughs> but yeah, you go to donlynch.net and, uh, you know, scrounge around that website and there's like free videos in there. And uh, uh, like this interview will be there. And um, you can see like some of the other videos and stuff on there. And there's a YouTube channel. It's got um, like it's got most of my videos on there. But uh, look at some of the stuff I'm doing and see some of the samples. I mean, what I've shown you today is minuscule. And um, there's, I have a big bag of tools that I can draw from. And uh, it's not, it's not, uh, there's no prescribed format to anything that I do. It's what that person needs in that moment. And I'm not one for chasing down, you know, where, you know when you go to the fair, and you go to that one game, they have a, like a, a table and there's like a, a, um, a, a mole like sticks his head up and then you whack it. <laughs> like a whack-a-mole. Yeah, whack-a-mole, you know, that whack-a-mole yeah. game. You know, a lot of people get, um, you know, they get stuck in that treatment thing where they're, you're playing whack-a-mole with them all the time. You know, you do one thing and something else pops up over there. <laughs> well, I'm not like that. I go right to root causes. You know, mm -hmm. I like to right to the heart. I like to go to timeline. I like to go to ego and rip ego energetically out of their body so they can feel it. You can literally feel where your ego is attached to your physical body oh and release man. those points. Okay. So uh, I just have to clarify. So when you say timeline, because I've experienced many times timeline therapy, um, that's not what you're referring to. You're talking about something different? Um, I have, uh, first of all, you have to realize that I am totally uneducated mm. in that stuff okay yeah and and i put a name to something but i can tell you what it is is like your own beliefs about who you were where you came from who you are today and where you're going tomorrow i call that timeline now i don't know what your definition is or anything but i can tell you what mine is okay so when you can break that timeline you can become who you truly are on a profound level and a very high level. Mm. That sounds okay. so nice. I can feel the energy of that. It sounds so great. Um, so people who want to work with you, it's Don, L-Y-N-C-H dot net. And you also have a contact form there. So if someone wants to reach out and work with you on Zoom yeah. or. Yeah, just send me an email and uh, hook up with me. It's like no big deal follow me. Um, you know, I do a free zoom like once a month or every six weeks and work on 20, 30 people at a time. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's a lot of fun. But, you know, I like having fun doing this stuff and, uh, and I can prove to people, you know, you don't have to, you know, this is just, uh, it's an opportunity to learn no matter what your difficulty is. It's a, it's an opportunity to learn and I can give you some different tools to treat all different kinds of stuff. And, uh, it's just like you and your connection there are people like you that are highly connected already. You know, I just help point out stuff that, you know, you just get used to it. I mean, everybody's the same way. You just get used to a certain thing and you don't think you can do anything about it. But the reality of it is, yeah, once you become aware of it, be aware of your power, you can take that stuff out. You can change that connection. Mm. 
That's beautiful. Yeah, create a new default that I like. So I, I want to go back to this idea because I've, I've been taking so many notes while we talk. So originally, uh, you brought up cell phones and you brought up healing people with cell phones and not really understanding what, but following the guidance that you were receiving. So can you show us as sensitives how we can reverse and be free of harmful effects of EMFs, of 5G, um, of anything that could protect ourselves from EMF emissions, Wi-Fi, computers, all the things you and I are doing right now, right. cell phones. So right. uh, yeah, what can we do to? Okay, the first step is not to think. The first step is to feel, mm -hmm. feel on a profound level, okay? So if you take, uh, you get your cell phone handy there. All right, okay, is it on? My cell phone is on. Yes. Okay. All right. Now just set it away from your body. Put away. it away from you. Okay. Okay. All right. Now just go calm and calm and centered and feel your body. Go calm and centered. All right. <laughs> Are you hearing the puppies? Yeah. <laughs> They're not calm and center. Can you work on them? <laughs> Someone must be delivering a package and it's high alert. <laughs> okay. Three of them. I have three. Oh. When one goes, they all go. There's, you know, they all tell each other. Yes. All right, here we go. All right, go calm and center again. Okay. All right. Now. Just pick your phone up and keep it away from your body. Just pick it up. All right. And now hold it, you know, like a couple of feet away from you. All right. Now slowly move it towards your ear like you're going to use it. Okay. And, and the idea here is to be, feel it change in your body. Feel the change as you move it closer. Feel your, okay, right there, right there. You felt that. I know you did. Okay. Now release that. Gotta keep your eyes open. It's more fun that way though. All right, so now, now there's still a little bit there. Yeah, you can feel is. it. Yeah, get that. Still a little bit. That's fear right there. Like, wow. All right now. Now, just for yucks, because a lot of people aren't gonna be able to do this. I mean, just pick your phone up, put it up against your head. Now feel your body, feel it right there. Feel that tightness, take a deep breath, tap somewhere on your body, like on your leg or somewhere, just tap somewhere with the other hand and take a deep breath. I don't know if you hear my dog's barking now too. I hear, I hear. <laughs> The whole West Coast, all the way down to Mexico. It's like there's someone at the door. <laughs> all right, that's tapping. That's good. Okay. Now take your phone and put it on your thyroid. Put it down. Put it right at the right at the base of your neck, right at the top of your sternum, right there. Okay. Now feel your body right there. Mm -hmm. All right. Feel how weak you are. Pinpoint the weakness. Take a deep breath. Tap somewhere and blow it all the way out. Now feel the shift. Feel that. Oh, that's interesting. Wow, it's like the energy just dissipates. I yeah, yeah. Okay, now I'll give you my understanding of it, okay? At this point, it could change in the future, but this is my understanding of that phenomena is that you have an electrical field of your own, an electromagnetic field because you're electric, okay? The phone has its own. And when the two fields come together like this, it creates points of resistance in the bag of water that you are, okay? And those points of resistance are electrical. When you activate the relaxation response, when you take that deep breath, your brain will go to that point of resistance and release it. And your energy from your phone and your body become integrated and they don't 
cause damage to the body. You know what, now, it, it, may, I, may I interject something that when I was, I was very young um, and I read the big book of, of Alcoholics Anonymous, the tr yeah, the big book they call it. And <clears throat> remember this passage um, and acceptance is the answer to all my problems for today, which I thought was very interesting, but I thought, oh, okay, you know, you just have to accept things. And then one day I had this epiphany because I used to have a lot of trouble with anger. I didn't know if I got angry, I didn't know what to do with it. So I would stuff it and I would hurt myself over it and I couldn't express it. There was the whole Michigas. And I realized at some point like, bing, ah, and acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. What if I accepted that I have this feeling? And I started using it with all sorts of feelings. And I'd literally sit in a chair and say, I have this feeling, I accept this feeling. I would allow and receive the feeling, let it be in my body or wherever it was. And what was, of course, that was a beautiful thing because it completely changed my relationship to what was going on. What I didn't expect was that it immediately transmuted and was gone. It dissipated. Yeah. It healed immediately and was no more, which was awesome, right? And so I'm thinking of that as you are using these different tools that this being with with what is the acknowledgement the feeling of the okay there you are hello and then breathing into and phew, releasing it, it it feels a lot the same and it's so fast how it exits yeah your brain will your brain is designed to protect the body by closing yourself off from what you feel your your ego is killing you yeah yeah yeah. Okay. So with what you and I just did and what we recognized and located, we were releasing whatever was going on, even if beliefs, you know, that people are out there saying what they're saying, or it could be energy. I don't know, but something was going on and I, I felt it for sure. And then I felt as I was breathing, oh, okay, great. There's, there's all freedom there. There's space there. That's great. And so is this how we can all, and this is a free tool, be free of these harmful effects and all the information that's bombarding it around, bombarding us, um, that we can handle it on our own. We can actually mitigate this. Absolutely. Okay. But the main thing is to feel. Now, the stuff that they're using in is like in all different kinds of forms. I mean, there's subliminal stuff going on. There's energetic stuff going on. There's all kinds of stuff going on, but sometimes you can't see it. And then you have to be able to feel it. Okay. Mm. And once you feel something, you can release it. You can decide if you want to keep it or not. Okay. So Don, yes. memory like an elephant. In the very beginning, you said there are, there are cell phones and electronics inside of the body. What do you mean by that? Were those my words exactly? Yes, sir. <laughs> no, no. I, the cell phones and electronics affect the body. Oh. So, you know, you, when you're in an electromagnetic field, like you're in one right now, all right? You're not aware of it, but you're definitely in one. And it's creating tension actually right in your sternum, right in your mid thoracics, right in here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I just pointed that out to you. And now maybe right there, right there, you can kind of feel that now. All right. So just release that. Now, in the interest of public safety. Okay. Now, now I have. You know, I, I worked on thousands of people in Mexico and the, Kathy Mason from Kathy Mason Marketing uh, discovered me and dragged me kicking and screaming out into the public. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> Blessings. <laughs> you released him out into the world. And I started working on gringos up there in Colorado. Mm. And I'm like, there is, there's this weird phenomenon that I've only run into like 
working in Mexico, I only ran into a, maybe in one or two or 3% of people, you know, hardly anybody. And then suddenly up there, I was like 40 or 50% were having this one thing happen. I'm like, what is going on up here? They're, they're doing something to you guys up there. I don't know what's going on, you know, and, but there's an easy fix to it. I, I, I put a name to it. There's no scientific name that I know of. I, this is totally unscientific, okay? But it's like the fact is like you have two wires that are touching each other and they're crossed. And they're right up here, right in the middle of the top of your head. Mm. And um, I personally, I think it's from e-smog and all this stuff that's going on. You know, like all the, uh, you know, like 5G and 4G and all that stuff is going on. And it's affecting the ability of our brain to function completely. Oh, that's very yeah. interesting. And, but there's an easy fix to it that I discovered mm -hmm. while that was sent to me. And this is from one of the guides, actually. And, and so just all you got to do, and you've got a little bit of it, but not much. But for the people that are, are actually listening to this yeah. or watching it in the future, I mean, just take one of your fingertips, take, your, take one hand of fingertips, and right up here, right between your ears, right at the top of your head, just tap like five or six times really hard. Tap. And then just take a deep breath. And blow it all the way out. Now stop tapping and feel your body. Wow. That's awesome. That's like EFT tapping on crack. Yeah. Ooh, very lovely. Gosh, I hope you guys who are listening and watching, don't just watch me or listen to me. My goodness, do this, do this while he's describing this. And so this is something when you're talking about these two little wires that may have been activated by all the new electronics and technology going on. And it sounds like it's creating some brain fog, not you know full firing, that this brings us back on board. Yeah. Tapping and the breathing. So the feeling, yeah. as you keep yeah. saying, you must feel it. Okay. You know, so like, you know, people have been watching or listening to this now, you know, they're, we've activated parts of our brain. And, and now when you do that, when you put that, that frequency, that tapping frequency into your crown chakra like that, what happens is, is that the animal brain recognizes that problem instantly. And then you take that deep cleansing breath and it releases that point of resistance that was created right there. And then you feel the shift, just like you just did. You feel it instantly. Yeah. And what about anti-aging? Do you have uh, new information that you can share about anti-aging that's not commonly known that I can bottle and sell? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny you should mention that. Uh, this one scientist, Yuri, the Russian guy, he, he, uh, he's selling that kind of stuff, you know, and he wanted me to do one of my, one of my things and actually put the energy into a, uh, a liquid and send it to him. And he was going to, he was going to uh, commercialize it and stuff, but uh, I didn't do it. So I'm giving this stuff away for free. So I'll just feel this stuff mm -hmm. like this. I'm going to do some for you. Okay. Yeah. All right. So all right, so I'm gonna go right to your, yeah. Okay, so health is about balance. Okay, mm -hmm. if you're sick, you're out of balance. Okay. So I gave you a little demo about outside your body, and now we're gonna do the inside of your body, and this is about anti-aging. Okay. It's funny you should mention this. I just went, I was at a doctor yesterday, and he he did the checkup on me. He says, he says, how old are you? And I'm like, I told him. He's like, wow. And he's like, <laughs> mic drop, <laughs> doctor, yeah. mic drop. Yeah. Good. And so, all right. So, one of the things is about being in balance energetically in the body. Okay. All right. So, now, like on your right here at your throat chakra, mm -hmm. it is going, it's going this way. I'm going to, I'm going to actually tell you. Yeah, please. Camera. See me. All right. So, it's going, it's going right there like this. And now I'm going to speed it up a little bit. And, Oh, hold on just a minute. Yeah, okay, it's going this way. 
right? I'm going to push a little bit harder like this. Well, it's got a, it's got a little something going on there. Just a second. <sighs> Remind me after this to do the triad with you. Okay. Yes. This is actually the triad. You know what? I want to do the triad first because this is more important for people. Okay. You know, we talked about all the fear and anxiety and stuff. Yeah. What happens? What What happens is that um, there's a connection between your amygdala, which is your fight or flight thing, your gland right up here behind your eyes. I just call this a, a capacitor. It's an electrical capacitor de designed to discharge rapidly. That is hardwired down through your thyroid. Okay. Another capacitor designed to discharge rapidly. And those are all... They go down, they're hardwired right into your adrenal gland sitting on top of your kidneys, mm -hmm. okay? And what happens is, is when you're in a stressed out state of fear and anxiety all the time, or you're in a bad relationship or bad work environment or, or some kind of like environmental pollution of some sort or e-smog all the time and stuff, your amygdala is sensing that this is damaging the host body that, it's, that the animal brain's riding around in, okay? and it wants to protect the body. So it is taking this, these capacitors up here and firing them down through the thyroid, sucking the energy out of the thyroid and driving it down into your adrenal gland sitting on your, uh, right on your kidneys, okay? And what happens is you go hypothyroid, you get sick all the time, your immune system is shot, your blood pressure and everything related to your kidneys, bam, because you get this supercharged electrical capacitors sitting on top of your kidneys on your organs, okay? And all kinds of problems that manifest from that, okay? But since we're just bags of water and uh, these are capacitors, it's just like a capacitor on your compressor on your refrigerator. Okay. To get your, your compressor going, it has a capacitor there that shoots a bolt of energy into the motor to make it start up fast, okay? And so, what we can do is like on that capacitor, you take a screwdriver and just short it across and you put the capacitor back to neutral. Mm -hmm. Okay, then it has to build up a charge again. Well, we can do the same thing with that triad system in the body. All right. So now, Debbie, just take your take a hand and put it up next to your eye, right? Like that. Okay. All right. So what we're doing is we're connecting with the capacitor behind your left, your left eye that uh is your amygdala. It's about, it's an almond shaped thing. It's right behind your eye, about half inch or so, inch behind your eye. All right, move your hand forward just a little bit, quarter inch forward. Make it clarify that connection right there. Right there, you feel that. All right, now just tap somewhere on your leg or anywhere else in your body. Just take a deep breath and blow it out. <sighs> now, people watching or listening to this, please do this, please. It sounds silly, but believe me, just try it. With just bags of water. This is just a, a discharging of, of a capacitor. Okay, now drop that hand, go to the other side, do the same thing. All right, feel a connection, tap, take a deep breath, blow it out. Get the water bottle here so we can see the hand a little better ish. Ish. <laughs> Zoom, you gotta love you. Okay. Okay. Now take that hand and put it on your thyroid like this. Don't hook it. Don't hook it, but keep it straight like this. You can lift your uh, elbow up to keep your hand straight across your body. Don't hook your thumb up. Don't do that. Keep it straight. Okay. Now put the middle of your palm right on your thyroid. I'm going to help you a little bit. All right. Move it towards your left shoulder a little bit. A little bit more. Like stop right in there. Now go up tight right against your neck. Right there, right in there. Stop right there. All right. All right. Feel that connection. Now tap, take a deep breath and blow it out. Tap with the other hand. Tap. Take a deep breath, blow all the way out. Then feel your body.
Okay. You don't tap on the other hand. You got to tap somewhere else. It's we're, we're just vacuous. Tapping. Yeah. Just okay. Now take your hand down. Take your hand down. Okay. Now take take a hand and put on your uh, your adrenal gland. Do your right one. Get your hand free. Put your right hand on your kidney. Your right kidney. Put on your right kidney. Go back. Back around your back farther. 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 Like right back in there. Stop right there. Right there. Okay. All right. Now move it up like a, just like a half inch straight up your body and move it forward just a little bit, quarter inch forward right there. Stop right there and feel your body. All right. Now take a deep breath, tap somewhere, take a deep breath, blow it all the way out. And feel a shift. Stop tapping. Yeah. Feel a shift. That came online. <sighs> Ooh. <laughs> wow. All the way into my head. It's still moving. <sighs> move it, move your hand forward just a quarter of an inch forward. Right there. Stop right there. Right there. Do it again. Tap, take your breath, blow it out. Okay, now drop that hand, go to the other side. Tapping and holding. Right. You're not quite on it though. Stop tapping just a second. Okay. I'm listening to my dog barking out here. Yeah. All right, just, I got distracted for just a second. Move it, let's see. Move your hand, uh, just like a quarter inch straight up. And move it forward a quarter inch, right in there, right there. Do it, tap, blow it out. And feel the shift. All right, let's go back to that right kidney. Go back to your right kidney for just a second. Mm -hmm. Right there, just right where you got your hand at. Just tap, take your breath, blow out. There's still some more there. Move it, move it forward, eighth of an inch. Right there, stop right there, right in there. Stop, tap, pull it out. Okay, just relax. Are we having fun yet? Yeah. <laughs> this is fun. I think I find this fascinating. Better? Are you satisfied? Okay. Yeah. I mean, we could go deeper into it, um, but there's not enough hours in the day. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I think, Don, a yeah. couple of things. A, you must come back. We must, we must dance again. <laughs> you must fill my dance card again. All right. And because um, I have so many... I already have, you know, a whole second show <laughs> with you. And this one was a grand, a show grande, a vente show, a vente dare to dream. <laughs> what did you want to say? Feel more, think less. Feel the flow, go with it. Don't fight it. Connect outside yourself. Trust the connection. Awesome. So beautiful. I'll be glad to come back whenever you just let me know. Yeah, totally. Like we have to, because this is like, are you serious? We haven't even gotten to wormhole travel. <laughs> um, and there's so much more. 
this is beautiful. So Don, this is Dare to Dream. What do you next dare to dream? My next dare to dream would be <laughs> I hate to say it. Um, I've been on a keto like diet. <laughs> Is it to eat a piece of bread <laughs> and rice and potatoes? It's really simple. <laughs> Just a cookie. <laughs> I'm going to send you a care package. <laughs> there are keto cookies. <laughs> Is there? <laughs> yes. Yeah. There are, and there are fat bombs. Do you know about fat bombs? No, no, I don't. Don't even tell me about it. I don't want to hear about it. This is all keto for real. Maybe another couple of weeks. <laughs> okay, another couple of weeks. You have, you got it. You could do, as I always say to myself, you can do anything for one day, right? So one day at a time. You can do this. But right. yeah, when you're ready, when you come up for air, hit me up. Because <laughs> okay. there's some amazing recipes out there for keto cookies, keto fat bombs, and, and it's everything still, you know, your net carbs will be on, almost zero and it's tons of fat and delicioso. You'll be Excellent. happy. Yes. Okay. And forward. is there anything you want to say here at the end that you would like to say or that Kathy would make you say? So we make both of you happy. Right. Kathy, let's see. She would make me say, make sure you visit donlynch.net and grab the free videos. Okay. And uh, take a look at some of the other offerings and uh, check out some of the testimonials and uh, have fun, you know, just go with the flow. Yeah. It it's doesn't, been... have, it doesn't have to be serious. I mean, come on, let's go. Mm -hmm. We're here to learn. Let's experience this thing. Let's get it on. <laughs> this has been such an honor and a pleasure. I have uh, really, you're such a refreshing surprise. Thank you for being and for all you do and for accepting the gift when it came to you and for helping us with your gift as well. I've really enjoyed this. Thanks, Debbie. Thanks for having me on. Blessings. I end today's show with this quote from Deepak Chopra. Even though the body appears to be material, it is not. In the deeper reality, your body is a field of energy, transformation, and intelligence. Join me again next week on this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream. My guest next week is Dr. Christopher Macklin. He's a powerful channeling medium and healer from England, and he can heal many people simultaneously. And I am a certified coach whose expertise is in helping you to write a page turner book, taking your book to a guaranteed international bestseller, and learning how you can be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get wonderful results for yourself. I pull back the curtain so you can be the force that you came here to be. Subscribe to this inspirational YouTube channel. Give us a like, please, and a nice comment. And also let your friends know about this show. And most important, don't just dare to dream. Remember to turn all your dreams, including the ones about your health and well-being, into your reality. <laughs>